Welcome to Gadget Bootcamp. In video 1, getting started. We will cover the following items. Locating the gadget directory. Adding a new gadget folder. Adding a seed gadget file. High level overview of seed gadget. Running our new gadget. Let's locate the gadget directory. Open the file explorer. Locate the C drive. Locate and open the users folder. Locate and open the public folder. Locate and open the public documents folder. Open the Vectric folder. And then, select and open the gadgets folder. Now, open up VCarve Pro and display the gadget drop down menu. When comparing the drop-down menu to the files located in the gadget directory there is a one-to-one -one relationship. In Explore, in the Gadget folder, create a new folder and name it My New Gadget. Place a copy of the supplied seed file in the directory and rename the file to my new gadget. Be careful, the file must have ILUA extension in order for it to work properly. Return to vCarve Pro and review the gadget pull down menu. As you can see, my new gadget is not appearing. Let's restart vCarve Pro and open the gadget drop down menu revalidate my new gadget appears. Proceed with running the gadget. The dialog box indicates the job has not been fully set up. Let's take a look at the gadget code. I am utilizing the ZeroBrain Studio IDE software but it is perfectly okay to use any ASCII text editor. This supplied seed file contains a main function and one subfunction. Looking at the main function, we can see that the first validation examines the Vectric job function to determine if the job has been set up. On failure of a job exists, displayed message box indicates an error with the note no job loaded. It is always good habit to place notes in your code as I show here. Taking a closer look at the job validation section. Notice that I have labeled areas within the code to help organize where items should be located. Labels like, get data, calculations, and do something provide types of grouping for code. Let's save our work, and return to vCarve Pro and set up a job. Now let's try our gadget again. Now, it appears to be working as we had expected. Let's take a quick look at the code once more. The function display test calls a subfunction called display test. This function receives one argument and displays a message box with that message. Let's review what we've learned. We located the gadget directory. We added a new gadget folder. We added the provided seed file. We performed a high level overview of our seed file. And we successfully ran the gadget. Now, you're on your way to developing your own gadget. Any questions?